Welcome back. This is tutorial movie number five, Monitor and React. I assume you've already completed tutorial movie number four, Review AI Plans. If you haven't done so already, please launch the game and load the saved game, Tut Review AI Plans. Zoom into the action. And let the game run at normal speed until the assaults start. Hit the pause button or the space bar and you can see here that the assaulting units are now in assault. They have the big fat arrow, the assault arrow. Note that the battalion headquarters and mortars are in the reserve position. If we lasso the assault units, we can see their route and each of the units has its planned task in succession. Remember, we're attacking in successive lines. You can tell that they're in line by the shape of their occupied area. And to confirm that, click on B Company, select its plan task, and here we can see that its formation is in line. Another thing to note is that the first 318th Battalion is yet to start its assault. The reason for this is that it's on foot. Motorised units move and organise quicker the non-motorised. Next time we can try coordinating start of the assaults by setting their H hour, but we'll leave that for next time. Run the game again and pause as soon as the first 318th starts to assault. Now it's time to bombard the forward enemy position. Select the 22nd Field Artillery Battalion. Hit the B key for bombard. And click just about here. This will place a bombard task and drag it slightly so the forward edge now overlaps the enemy position. The area within this box is known as the bombardment zone. We position it like this to give the maximum time for the artillery to fire on the target. Artillery fire automatically lifts when friendlies get too close. There is a safety zone around the bombardment zone and that varies according to the calibre of the weapon. In this case it's around about 100 metres. Note also that the start time is set for two minutes from now. That's about the time it takes to coordinate the artillery fire. Note also the duration is 11 minutes and that should be fine. And that's about the time it'll take C Company here to advance to within the safety zone. Now you could have ordered the bombardment at the same time as you ordered the attacks but it was best in this case to wait until we knew when the 318th was going to start its assault. You want to make sure that your bombardment is as close to the time of arrival of your forward assaulting troops. That suppresses the enemy for the longest portion of time while your assault troops are vulnerable in the assault. As I mentioned before, we could have coordinated the timings of the two attacks and then coordinated our bombardment with those, but we'll leave that for another time. Another point to note at this stage is that so far you've committed just one of your two artillery battalions. The 66th is still under AI control. 
As a general rule, I recommend you always leave at least some artillery under AI control. Of course, you can override this, but you'll probably find that as the action develops, your focus is drawn to a particular area. And by leaving at least some artillery under AI control, it can attend to matters in those areas that you're not focusing on. If you click off and then select the FS or Fire Support tab. Now that we've given an order to the 22nd Field Artillery Battalion, it appears in the Fire Support tab. You can select it and you can notice that its artillery ammo is at full strength. You can see details here about the unit. From now on, you can simply select and order the 22nd directly from the Fire Support tab without having to scroll to its location and select it on the map. Now let's just check on our Overwatch units, B Battery and B Company. Here's B Battery, and if we select it, you can see that it's moving along the road up towards the objective on the hill. If we click here again, B Tank Company is also there, so our coordination was pretty good. But you notice that B Company is advancing directly up to the hill. The AI chooses different routes according to its own logic and that's fine. It looks like at this stage both units are going to arrive on the objective after 51st Battalion has cleared the hill. So all is good. From here on the game as it runs on your machine may vary to what happens on my machine. The reason for this is that the AI is not prescriptive, it doesn't run to a set script and because it makes its own decisions based on the situation at hand and because of the random probabilities involved things can take different directions and so the gameplay may end up being slightly different. Please bear with that as we proceed. Things are going to hot up now so let's zoom in on the action. Hit the space bar to start the game running. As we can see our bombardment is happening. Look over here in the fire support tab. Pause the game on first contact. Note, A Company 24th Engineers has a blue engagement indicator at the bottom right of its icon. Select A24th, go to its log, and we can see here that it's been engaging. A blue light means the unit is firing. If we see an orange light, it means the unit is taking fire, a red light and it's receiving casualties, and a white light means some of its men are surrendering, which is not good. Note in the log for A Company that it's halting, which means it's reacting. Halting is a route status. Hit the F2 key to show the route status in the unit information box. Normal units have an upright green arrow. Halting units have a green square. Retreating units, that is those units who are falling back under control, have an upside down orange arrow. If they're retreating in place, meaning they're still in control but they're staying put because it's too dangerous to go anywhere else, they will have an orange square. If they have an upside down red arrow, it means they're routing, which means they're no longer in control and the men are just fleeing as best they can. And they'll go back a long way and take a long time to recover. A red square means they're either routing in place or they're recovering from rout. Either way, they are, for all intents and purposes, non-effective. 
No, we also have other units that are halting. B Company here and the enemy unit. You'll notice on the enemy unit here now that we have a better Intel report on it. It's current and it's excellent. And we know enough to know that it's from the second company, 27th Fusilier Regiment. Another indicator of engagements are the fire lines that emanate from units. Run the game slowly and I'll try and pause it as the fire line occurs. There we go. As you can see, the fire line emanates from the firer to the target. The colour of the line indicates the type of fire. In this case it's red, which is anti-armour fire. Most likely a rocket propelled anti-tank weapon being fired at a vehicle inside that company. The thicker the line, the greater the firepower. An orange line would indicate anti-personnel fire, i.e. machine guns and rifles. And a grey line would indicate bombardment, such as mortars or artillery. Run the game at normal speed again. Notice the firing continues. and the intensity increases as the enemy is encountered. Pause the game at 0701. You'll notice that the map has lightened, indicating dawn. Roll the cursor over the weather display and you can see the details there. Clear skies, it's bitterly cold, minus six degrees Celsius, and there's snow on the ground. Sunrise, or full, full daytime, is not for another hour. With increased light comes increased spotting range, and your units previously advancing under cover of darkness will now be fully exposed and start receiving long range fire. But it also means your long range artillery and your overwatch group on the hill should now come into their own. Things are about to hot up. Let's check on our Overwatch group and see what they can now sight. Click on the Tools tab, click on the Line of Sight tool and drag from our Overwatch group towards Lomasvila. And as you can see now they have an excellent sighting along the road. Remember the brighter or lighter the colour the better the sighting. Another way of looking at this is to use the Area Line of Sight tool. Again, click on the forward edge, and if we zoom out, we can see that all those areas that are coloured with a light shade can be seen very well. Those with a dark shade can be seen but poorly, and those without any shading can't be seen at all. So from on top of the hill here, we can see right across to Mars Belt, over to Lomas Vila, but not down into the River Valley. Double click to end the tool. Zoom back in. Note, there are two German units on the road between Lomas Vila and Steinbruck. Select the forward unit, it's an assault gun unit with some Stug 3s, 10 of them in fact. They'll cause us some real concern. Double click the entry and here we can see the data for this Stug 3G. It's an assault gun so it's an armoured fighting vehicle but doesn't have a turret. The gun in fact is, is uh, fixed and has limited uh, traverse. Uh, it manoeuvres by manoeuvring the whole vehicle to line up on its target. It's 75mm 
uh, gun is effective against anti-personnel and anti-armour. Hit the F5 key first to show deployment, hit it again to show facing and yes it is heading down towards the, the, the crossing. Hit the F4 key and this will now show combat power in the unit information box. This display is an amalgam. The background colour is indicates route status, so green is normal, uh, orange is retreating and red is routing, but the number is a representation of overall combat power. Value of 2 is twice as effective or powerful as a value of 1 and a 3 is twice as powerful as 2. So this is a fairly powerful unit and we need to be concerned about it reaching the crossing. If we hit the range rings we can see that it has a very effective range and can start engaging all our units close to the crossing, particularly from the 51st Battalion here. So what about our Overwatch group? If we select B Company here, have a look at its log, it hasn't started to engage and neither has B Battery. If we select their threat tool and you click on a unit it will show you lines towards what it believes are its primary threats. The brighter the red colour the greater the threat. We can select B, B battery and notice that B battery doesn't have a line of sight to these units as yet but B Company does. We should expect B Company to open fire shortly unless of course it's distracted by this unit closer to it. Um, in general a unit will engage its highest threat but priority will be given uh, to units that are closest. Double click to end the tool. You could wait to see if B Company and B Battery will engage these units. However, I would recommend at this stage also committing your artillery to interdict them as well. They're two units of high power concentrated together moving in a known direction. Um, this would be a good target. Go to the fire support tab, select the 22nd, hit the B key to bombard and we need to estimate where these unit will be in a couple of minutes. I would, I would say that around this location here should catch them and will leave the uh, bombardment for just five minutes. So right click the duration tool and that will drop it back to six minutes, that will be fine. So let's run the game now. Pause the game. Note the artillery is taking effect now on the targets. Also note the enemy here is routing. If we select that enemy unit and we hit the F5 key we can see that it's routing towards the west and away from our units. Elsewhere the enemy still are standing firm. We may have to consider as soon as the artillery finishes its bombardment mission uh, on the road shifting that fire down to this position here, the 227th, to try and dislodge it um, as our 318th are not making great progress at the moment. Let's run the game for a little bit longer. We'll pause again. Our artillery from the 22nd has now finished its bombardment. Note also that 
B Company now has started to engage the enemy. If we check its threats, we can see that its primary threat now is definitely the Stug Company on the other side of the river. It's safe now, I think, to shift our fire for our artillery onto other targets. Select the 22nd, hit the B key. Now, we could target or we'll try and target the 227th directly, but given the distance between it and the forward edge of our friendly forces, any artillery fire that we place that will overlap the 227 would be too close to our units. But what we can do is we can target this other unit here, which is providing mutual support to the 227th. So we'll select that, and again we'll just let it fire for a short period, around six minutes, and we'll see what effect that has. We'll now run the game. I'm pausing now because I've just noticed that the 51st assault gun platoon here is routing, or is route recovering, um, select it, and we'll have a look at its log, we can see that it's taking, taken some casualties and is routing, and if we have a look here, we can see on the personnel bar that its at start personnel was around the 70% mark, whereas its current, the lighter blue colour, current personnel strength is around 54%. So it it's only a small unit, so when it loses a few men, it takes a fairly significant chunk out of it, and this affects its morale. In this case, if we have a look at the morale, you can see it's already started to drop. It's a very high quality unit though, and it should be okay for now. It will probably take the unit around about an hour to recover, and then it will rejoin the battle. Hit the space bar to run the game again. Note the enemy retreating. Pausing it again. We have a situation here where our engineer company is now retreating. If we select it and have a look at its log, we can see that it's taking casualties. Um, but its morale is still high and it's only taking uh, one or two casualties. So it's in pretty good shape. It will withdraw about 300 metres. It will deploy and recover there for around 10 to 15 minutes and then rejoin the battle. Notice also, briefly, we would have seen the headquarters um, here retreat. We now have an intel report here of an enemy unit, supposedly a company that's routing. Most likely, that is the headquarters. Uh, that has withdrawn, um, but because of the heat of the battle, the smoke and everything else, the sighting report on that is not very good, its reliability is poor, um, and so that's probably a misrepresentation of what was, in fact, the, the battalion headquarters for the enemy 1st 27th Battalion. Note also that the enemy units that were heading towards the crossing from Lomas Vila are now in trouble. We have a sighting here of the enemy artillery uh, company here routing, and uh, the other unit has not made any progress. So it looks like our overwatch group here has had a good effect. We'll run the game. just pause the game. Note we've received a report at the top of the screen at 0740. C Company uh, 35th Tank Battalion has reported to have destroyed the Headquarter Battalion unit, the one we talked about just a minute ago. Also, and most importantly note, that the unit that was in front of the 318th is no longer 
it looks like it's routed off in this direction here. This now opens the way for the 318th to Steinbrook. We can deal with these units here with our artillery. So the question is, do you now commit to phase two and order the 35th tank battalion to attack from Steinbrook to Lomasvila? I would counsel to wait until the 51st has secured Steinbrook. The reason for doing this is twofold. One, by securing Steinbrook here, you're actually securing the, the forming up place for the 35th. And two, the 35th at the moment does not have any of its heavy tank units um, in B and C Company. C Company is attached to the 51st and B Company is in our Overwatch group. We don't really want to release the Overwatch group while the enemy Stug Company is still here. However, once 51st has secured Steinbrook, the attached C Company can deal with it and then we can release B Company and then we can order the attack. Select the fire support tab again. Select the 22nd so artillery ammunition is still good. Hit the B key and bombard this position here. We'll just drag a little bit back this way to try and catch the uh, retreating or routing unit here as it flees back. Again, right click on here, just six minute bombardment will be fine. And we'll now run the game again. Note, this has now dispatched both these units and they'll be out of the action for quite a while. 51st is approaching the town, so the time is nearly there. We'll just let it run for a few more minutes. Note the 318th is now making progress towards the town. The A24th Engineer Company is recovered and rejoining the battle. Our AI controlled artillery is bombarding the enemy's Stug Company. And we pause the game now as we've received a message saying we've achieved the Steinbrook Bridge objective. Well done. We'll let the game run for just a few more minutes until the bulk of the 51st is over the river. Excellent. You might have noticed the Stug Company routing off here under the uh, weight of uh, artillery and direct fire. If we select it now and have a look at its equipment, we can now see that our estimate is it only has six Stugs left. So it's been badly mauled and will be out of action for some time, which will be excellent, but it is also an imperative why we need to order the attack now so we can take advantage of that. Now it's time to save the game. I'll save this as Shoot. Phase one achieved. Feel free at this stage to peruse the battlefield, have a look at the enemy intel reports and have a look at your own forces and check the logs. You may be surprised at just how active and inactive some units are. And when you're ready, open up tutorial movie number six phase two see you then